Check, check. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, you're safe. The lights are no longer blinking, and you can hear me fine, right? You cannot. Am I supposed to do something? Okay, is that better? All right, so we got the lights. They're not blinking anymore, and we are ready for a dynamic, and I do mean dynamic presentation by Ms. Linda Clemens, the body language expert. I am Yolanda Smith, and I am a personal branding expert, and I am excited to introduce my mentor to you today. And uh, Linda is from Indianapolis, Indiana. She's the CEO of Sisterpreneur, and she is an award-winning, record-setting sales machine, I'm telling you, in the world of resort and timeshare sales, where she has generated over $2 billion in sales. That's impressive. She's a body language expert. She is trained and certified in analytic interviewing and statement analysis. You say, what does that mean? It's a process used to detect deception. Her clients, is, her clients and audiences include Southwest, Coca-Cola, Spanx, um, Nielsen, National Urban League, Nestle, uh, the FBI, to name a few, but she's also uh, done work with Johnson & Johnson, Nationwide, Black Enterprise, many of the people that are here with us, Coca-Cola, the Women's President Association, and the list goes on and on. I mean, most notably uh, of late, Louis Vuitton, Belvedere, and then the Women of the Channel. So as you can probably imagine, uh, she's been highly sought after for the work that she's doing. I think one of the things she said to me one day was, Yolanda, it's not what you say, it's what you don't say. So I would love to have the opportunity to bring to the stage Miss Linda Clemens. She shared the stage with notables like Oprah Winfrey, President Obama, Steve uh, Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, as well as Dr. Condoleezza Rice. Welcome, Miss Linda Clements. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Now listen, you're gonna have to give a sister some love, honey, because I got two pairs of Spanx on, a good bra, just to be out here with you. Come on, I've been trying to hold it in all day. Give a little love. Now, I don't know about you, I don't know about you. So, hey, Mr. DJ, you can turn that music off. You go ahead and turn it off. I got my sisters in the room here. Because you notice that when the power went out, we were probably wonder what's going on. But that happens when fire walks in the building. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Again, I want to thank Black Enterprise, the women of power. Caroline, thank you so much for extending the invitation for me to come back again this year to be able to share with you. I am excited, and I want you to know that I've been watching you the last few days. See, as a body language expert, it's not what you say. It's what you do that sometimes gets in the way, and I've been watching you. How many of you were in this session before last year? Okay. How many of you already heard about me? And how many of you are scared already? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So here's what I want you to do. Quickly, quickly for me, quickly for me, if you could just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. And I know Caroline gave us some wonderful rules on greeting each other, but here's what I want you to do. Get a partner. Just look at them. Get a partner. Just look at them quietly, because women have a tendency to be loud. So just quiet. 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 Good, 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 good. Now do me a favor. Listen very carefully. Remember, remember the salutation she gave us for us doing this and doing this. So here's what I want you to do from a business standpoint. I want you to look at that person in the eye and I want you to greet them. But here's how I want you to greet them in the lower register. The lower register is like this. Hello, how are you? So just greet them that way. 
Okay, good, 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 good. Now I want you to look at that person in the eye, and if it's okay, simply give them a fist bump as if they're a friend and say, hey, what's happening? <laughs> oh, y'all getting good at this. You're getting good at this. Getting good at this. Now here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. I know they're talking about that little thing going around. I got it. I got it. But I want you to look at that person. I want you to look at them deep in the eye, and I want you to greet that person as if they just gave you a million tax-free dollars. <laughs> Some of you just lost your mind. You forgot all about the coronavirus. You forgot about everything. Some of you start to spend the money even though it was imaginary money. Didn't know you had it. Sister over here saying hallelujah, I needed that money. I needed that money right now. Somebody else said now you could give me back my five dollars that you owe me. Oh, you got so excited about that just because of the imagination. Look how quickly that happened. That's how the shift is. You went from a different part of your brain called the amygdala. You went to that part of the brain that allowed you to elevate yourself simply by switching your thinking. Can you imagine whatever the thing that you think about the longest becomes the strongest in your life? If you can see it in your mind, you can have it in your hand. Right? That's what it's all about. You look fabulous. You look fabulous. Now do me a favor. Look at the sister standing beside you and tell her you bold. Girl, you're brilliant. You're bad to the bone. And sister, you are beautiful. Now, one more thing. You don't look as good as I do. Y'all go ahead and have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Have a seat. All right, all right, are we excited? This is good. So I'm, go I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be able to give you some information so that you could be able to ask questions later on. So jot them down, please. Many of you are going to take electronic media notes. Here's what happens. If you're taking electronic notes, what happens is you're disconnected. The brain is disconnected. When you take handwritten notes, the brain begins to filter what's not important and write down the thing that's important. Does that make sense? So thank you to my mentee for the introduction. Just really quick, can all my mentees please stand up? See, what I did was, what I did was these women, I paid for their registration. I'm not a big company, not a big company, okay? But I have a million dollar mindset. Paid for their registrations to be a part of this event. Many of them, it's their first time. Here's the deal. Here's a note for you right now. Ladies, have a seat. Here's a note for you right now. You want to sow where you want to grow. You want to sow where you want to grow. And you want to sow into someone who you want to grow. Somebody said, oh, that was a moment right there. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the nonverbal communication, and it is critical. I've been watching you all. Oh my gosh, I've been watching you. I've been watching the way you walk, the way you interact with each other. I've been watching when you got off the phone. Some of you just got off the phone with Leroy. He's wondering how to fix the poke chops and all the other <laughs> stuff, and you trying to get here and get your empowerment on, trying to get empowered, and he wants to know how to fix the poke chops. And you dealing with all of this, and the way you getting off the phone. Some of you were on the phone with a relationship that you just had a bad experience with, and simply by the way you disconnected the phone told me something. Something's going on. How many women in the room are married? Show of hands. How many women are single? Show of hands. How many of you are doing both? That was a trick question. That was a trick question right there. That was a trick question. Say automatically, you couldn't think that quick. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So let's talk about nonverbal communication, how important it is. Here is a quote, one of my favorite quotes by Emerson. And the quote goes like this. I cannot hear what you are saying because who you are being is getting in the way. I cannot hear what you are saying because who you are being is getting in the way. See, mama would used to say, action speaks louder than words. Granny used to say, baby, I hear you talking, but I don't see you walking. I cannot hear what you're saying because who you are being is getting in the way. For those analytics, you need to have your data and your statistics, so get ready to write this down because you're probably wondering, what does that mean? What does that mean? Write this down. Your communication, according to the communication theory by Dr. Maharabian, who still is at UCLA, and the communication theory goes like this. Your words are 7% of your communication. Everyone say 7%. 
7%. So the question that I'm asking you, the words that are coming out of your mouth, are they powerful or are they powerless? Are they passionate or are they passive? Are they poison or are they potent? Just saying the word cancer is feared in over 12 languages. What kind of words are coming out of your mouth? How do you inspire your teams? How do you inspire each other? Your words, once the words are out, you cannot retrieve them. 7%. According to Dr. Maharabin in the communication theory, he said that our tonality is 38% of our communication. Now there's a thing in sales hypnotherapy that I teach called intraverbal tonation, intraverbal. And what that simply is, that simply by saying something, utilizing the tone can actually change the message by 180 degrees. So let me give you a good example. Tonality 38. If I said to you, I saw Steve and Sandy at the mall the other day, and they were alone, simply by the tone, you're not thinking too much of it. Someone said, uh-oh. But if I did this, check this out. I saw Steve. And Sandy at the mall the other day. And they were alone. <laughs> Simply the tonality, right? So imagine how the tonality can change if you're in negotiation process. The tonality, if you're trying to get people to see things your way. The tonality, if you're trying to get to the heart. How many people in the room are in sales? Show of hands. Everyone should be raising their hand because here's the deal. If you're trying to persuade or convince someone you are in sales, let's do this one more time so you can pass the test. How many of you in the room are in sales? Show our hands. Okay, so that you won't get twisted at what sales is all about. It comes from the Scandinavian root word, selzik, which means to serve. It means to serve. So if you're trying to convince someone, persuade someone, your tonality is going to make a difference. How many of you who have been married a long time that your boo said to you, baby, when we met, your tone was a little different. But right now, it's a little rough right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. OK, all right. So tonality is 38%. Your nonverbal, Sandra, is 55% of your communication. 55%. So if you take the 38 and the 55, that's 93 of 93% 93 of your entire communication is nonverbal. Watch this. So it doesn't matter what you say, your nonverbal is getting in the way. How many of you that when you are at work and someone says something to you, and then all of a sudden, the moment that you think about it, you'll be about it, it's all over your face. Who knows what I'm talking about? Come on, raise your hand. It's a healing moment. Raise it, raise it, raise it. So check this out, check this out. We have 43 facial muscles in our face. 43. You you use 36 of them to make anywhere from 21 to 27 different expressions. I believe black women, my data only could make a thousand expressions. That's just me. That's just me. So guess what takes place? Watch. When you're having a conversation, and how many of you have conversations with people at your job, at work, that gets on your last reserve nerve? <laughs> The last reserve, the one you reserve for the in-laws for the holiday. <laughs> that last reserve nerve. And the thing is, they begin to talk or say something that you do not agree with. Then all of a sudden, your head, your face gets into that lock mode. And then you begin to do eye squinting. Who knows what eye squinting is? <laughs> eye squinting. There's a hand. She's walking in, raising her hand. They're walking in, raising her hand. So eye squinting and nonverbal communication. Everybody do this. Do this. Because what it is, you are second guess, you don't trust, you are evaluating, and you are trying to laser in on what's happening. And you may not believe what that person is saying, so you're looking at them because the eyes is trying to focus in. So many of you, you may be squinting in your presentation. And how many women in the room fold their arms when they're talking to folks and say, that's just me? Show of hands, come on, because you know, I know some of you got them folded right now. <laughs> Just unfold them, right? So here's what happens. When you fold your arms, you are closing off a power zone. Power zone. Everybody say power zone. Power 
Okay, so here are the power zones. I'm going to give you some basics that's going to help you. Here's the power zones. Everybody touch this area right here. See the little dip right here in your throat? Right here, right this area here. The scientific term for it's called supersternal notch. The supersternal notch, women have a tendency when they get nervous, a little bit uncomfortable, or the heat is on, they'll stroke the supersternal notch. So when I'm interviewing witnesses or suspects, so if I'm going to Ms. Johnson and have an interview with Ms. Johnson because the lawyer asked me to do the interview, I'll say, Ms. Johnson, can I ask you this question? Now, Ms. Johnson, where was your son, Stephen, on February the 12th? If she's protecting him and she does not want to say anything, unconsciously, she'll stroke the supersternal notch. Some of you do that unconsciously. You don't even know that you're doing. How can you see the picture when you're in the frame? Oh, my gosh, that's a drop-the-mic moment. <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one having a good time on my presentation here, taking notes. <laughs> My mentees take some notes for me so I won't miss this presentation. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. So sometimes you don't know how you're coming across. So we touch the supersternal notch because, number one, it's another area of pacifier. That's a power zone. The other area of a power zone is the heart. Everybody touch the heart. Around the heart area. On the left side of your body, touch the heart. That's the heart. You notice when you truly care for someone, you'll say to them, your movements are fluid. I love you from the bottom of my heart. You don't go like this. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Oh. oh. <laughs> it should be fluid, right? It should be fluid. So that's the throat, supersternal notch, the heart, the belly button. Okay? The navel, that's the first connection to another human being. The first connection. And here's the thing, when you're having a conversation, you're one-on-one -on -one and you're in a networking circle, how many of you know when you're done, you're ready to go, you're done, do you have a tendency to turn away? You turn away, right, right? You are cutting off the connection. Mm. Somebody said, this is a little deep. <laughs> you know, this is a little deep. So you got the throat, you've got the heart area, you got the navel, right? And then the other power zone area, can I talk, can I say this? It's the reproductive area, okay? And it's the reproductive, these are power zones. So women who have been abused, and sometimes men who've been abused, you'll see women will fold their arms because they're closing off their heart. They don't wanna have their heart broken again. So you're closing off a zone. How many of you, you have employees or team members that come into your office and you know they're coming in for something? And someone already hipped you, I'm just gonna let you know, such and such is gonna be coming in, they're gonna be talking about the report, somebody's gonna come in and talk about ask more money, they're gonna come in and one and one, if they didn't get the position, they're gonna be coming in to you. Automatically, when they walk in and they say, hey, what's happening? Or they wanna talk to you, what do you do with your arms? Automatically, and they say, what's up? Because you closed off a power zone. You shut the doors. This making sense. How many of you are guilty about this? You know what I'm talking about. And many of you say, well, that's just how I am. That's just me. That's just me. So I'm gonna ask you this. How many HR people in the room? Okay, get ready, HR folks, all right? So how many HR people in the room? Think about this. Who applies for work at a company and get the job, and then the HR representative gives them a directory of all the cray-cray personalities in the company? <laughs> Who gives them a directory that says, page 22, whatever you do, don't look at Leroy's left ear on a Wednesday? <laughs> Who tells that? So in other words, if I'm coming from outside of the company, how do I know that's how I am? It takes anywhere from four to six seconds to make that good first impression. And here's what happens. In that first impression, nobody tells you anything about what happens to the remaining minutes. What happens to the remaining minutes after the four to six, eight seconds, it's the remaining 20 to 25 to 30 minutes that the individual is validating you, analyzing you, and seeing if you are who you showing up to be. That's how critical it is. And you heard the saying, how many of you said heard the saying, fake it till you make it? That's the saying that was created by Mary Kay Ash, but here's the deal, as a body language expert, I'm gonna tell you this, the fake will fade. Make it sense. Okay, so here's what I need, because I'm gonna teach you something here. And what's so interesting, one of my mentees said, are you gonna do that other thing? First of all, Caroline invited me here to share with you some things that's gonna help take your business to the next level, take your personal business to the next level, your corporate business to the next level. You should be acting like you are the CEO of the company because it's a different kind of mindset when you do that because whatever your mind goes, that's where your energy flows. Oh my gosh, I need to write a book, okay? I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm just getting excited about myself here. All right, I need four volunteers, I need two women, and there's no, are there any guys in the room? You see when I'm doing something, people that I do not know. Robert, I know you. Any men in the room that I do not know? 
Because usually the men, when I'm in the room, they're usually in the back. All my girlfriends and my guy friends, they use me as a human lie detector. I have not purchased groceries in over 15 years because my friends invite me out to dinner when they have someone new in their life. <laughs> okay, I need four volunteers, people that I do not know. I do not know, you do not know you. Okay, okay, two right here, okay. Come back up here, sis, okay, all right, okay. You, okay, let's come up on the stage here. Okay, all right. Okay, one, two, three, four, all right. Hold on, sis, hold on, I'm gonna get you. I'll go. Oh, you said me. Oh, did you wanna come and play? <laughs> you, no, you're not good, you wanted to come. Okay, do that power walk and walk on up here. All right. Okay, ladies, I need you to spread out on the stage. All right. First of all, let's give them a big round of applause. Okay, you're at the Women of Power Summit. You are powerful. I need you to listen to me very carefully. I need you to listen to my voice, the tonality. I need you to listen, and I want you to look out at the audience. It's going to be very difficult to do, but I need you to listen to me. I'm going to count to three. Please listen to me. I'm going to count to three. When, on, when I get to three, I'm going to ask you to freeze. And the reason why I'm asking you to freeze, because if you move, it changes the language. Does that make sense? If you move, it changes the language. Say yes, it makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. May, yes, it makes sense. Good? Yes, it makes sense. Okay? Yes, it makes sense. Good? Yes. All right, okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three, freeze. Do not move. Do not move. Now, I want the audience, I want you to look at one thing for me. In nonverbal communication, when I'm working with law enforcement or doing some things with the FBI, who have been in my audience, I, a couple of things that I look for, I'm watching the feet. Don't move, don't move. I'm not going anywhere, boo. I'm not going anywhere. I want you to look at their feet. Ladies, look at their feet. Here's the thing. I want you to remember, which is very important, as you are moving up the ladder in corporate America, you are taking a stance. One thing you want to know, sir, I know you're working the, uh, the, the, the engineer. Could you please come up here for a minute? I know it wasn't in your pay. I know it wasn't in your contract. I know, but I need a man. Not like that, but I need a man right now, okay? Because I, I don't want this out on the World Wide Web. Someone says she need a man. Have them all lined up. That, that's my last problem, okay? Come right up here. So don't y'all move. Don't y'all move. Okay, stand right here, sir. Just stand right here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Don't move. Okay. So, so here's the thing. We didn't practice this. We didn't do anything. Look at the men, the gentlemen here. Men have a tendency. Ladies, make note of this. They take up real estate. They take up real estate, they hold their space, they hold their stand. Women have a tendency to get small. Just uh, that just that moment right there, I seemed to elevate him. It felt powerful. He felt power right there. He felt power. He could conquer the world. He felt power. Okay, darling, I, I know this happens when people are around me. Okay, I can dismiss you at this time. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. Touch me in the morning and just walk away. I got it. All right. All right, don't y'all laugh, don't y'all move, y'all moving, okay. So here's what I'm gonna do, permission to touch. I know we ain't supposed to be touching HR people, probably freaking out. This is simply a test. Okay, do not move, okay. So here's the thing, see how she's standing? She's got a nice width here, she's got a nice width here. Listen, here's what's happening with all these women. Number one, servant's mode. Number two, servant's mode. Number three, this one's interesting, right here. This one's interesting because look how she's holding her hand. Do not move. She's holding her hand in the pacifying mode. When she's holding her hand, women have a tendency to get a little nervous and they do this. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. That's what the body like. So her hand is also in the servant's mode. So this individual, she got her power zones all open right here. She's being transparent. Now, but here's the deal. They're being comfortable. Now watch this. Let's say she's doing a powerful presentation and she's standing like this in front of a group of her peers or her directs. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, we tried that before the company lost money that idea is not going to work the moment that it hits her mind it'll go rest to the matter and simply by the way she's standing permission to touch it's easy to push her over okay what is your name sis to show okay so what i appreciate about you we have not met this is not planned or anything what i appreciate about you you are very strong-willed when you make up your mind to do something you can do it okay is, is it correct it's correct and you don't need anybody you don't need a man for your plan or anybody Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's true. It's true. I have a really good husband, but once I make up my mind, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so here's what's so important to you that's very critical. Uh, you like to get to the point. 
You like to get to look at, mm, 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 already, short, mm, 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 I just simply made a statement, mm, 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 mm. okay? You like to get to the point, so here's what's real critical with this. Simply by the way you're standing, you go in, you're level headed, her head's in level head. A couple of you, I'm gonna talk to you about this, and so what I appreciate about you, once you make up your mind on something, man, unless someone who is in your inner circle that you have honor and respect for, that you are able to bend a little bit, do you understand what I mean? You can get like, I don't wanna say stubborn, oh, I just did, okay, I, I just did, didn't wanna say it, but it came out, Woo, it came out. Didn't wanna say it, okay? So you have a tendency, but you know, because you've been doing what you're doing so long and you know how it works, but here's what's important. And this may be speaking to someone else out in this audience. When you've been doing what you've been doing so long and you know how you do it, what's gonna happen is that when other people come in, on your team and add their creativity and their talents because you have a way of doing things, you'll begin to dictate or not do it. Who knows what I'm talking about? And then when you're doing it that way, that person will back up using their energy and their talents because they may be afraid or uncomfortable because you've been doing this thing so long. Is this making sense? All right, all right. So one of the things that I appreciate about you, if you have employees? Okay, so here's the deal. If anyone's working with her on her team, what I love about her, you'll get it done. You'll get it done, get it done. But if I come to you and she, I, she asked me, Linda, how was your weekend? Ask me, how was my weekend? How was your weekend, Linda? So if I say to you, oh my God, you're not going to believe just what happened over the weekend. It was like I'm just David Stater right now. Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So what happened on the weekend? We got a new dog. Well, it's not really a new dog. We had him before he ran away from home. But what happened is that I told Billy to give the dog a walk. And next thing you know, he opened the gate and Fifi goes out in the street. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. And Fifi got hit by a truck. Now, here's the deal. She is in pain. She's in excruciating pain. She's in pain. Here's what she's thinking simply from her body language. Just tell me the dog is dead. <laughs> simply from her nonverbal because she kept her head in level head rather than listen to what I was saying. She didn't even have to say a word. Even if she tilted her head in the emotional realm and just nodded her head, didn't have to say anything. She don't care about Fifi, probably don't care about me. Am I right? Get to the point. You're right. <laughs> Give care about no Fifi, okay? <laughs> okay, your name's sis. Tiffany. Okay, so Tiffany, what I appreciate about you, man, if you do some work, you like to get it done, you like to complete it. You're very private. You're very private. People have to earn the right to be in your circle. Do you know what I mean? Now, here is the thing. I don't know where you are in your company, but there are some things that you should be speaking up about. Sometimes you don't. You second guess it. Then you go home and you're saying, I wish I would have said something. Am I right, Tiffany? You're right. Okay, now how do I know that? Because when I was talking to her, she was doing something that you all do sometimes. It's called lip compression. Everybody do this. See, lip compression tells me something's wanting to come out. It doesn't always come out, so she's holding it back. Sometimes what that simply means, lip compression biting their tongue. Did you hear such and such say that? And how many times many of you sit in one of your corporate meetings and someone going around, everybody saying something, and all of a sudden somebody says something stupid. <laughs> and you're wanting to say something, and you go, and, and they'll say, Linda, you've got a comment? I Lip compression. So that tells me there's some things that you'll be wanting to say. So what's critical for you is that when you go home at night, no matter what goes on at the job, you need to make sure that you journal so that you can empty all of that because you have a tendency, beautiful one, to hold on to things and you internalize that. Do you know what I mean? Yes. All right, yes. all right. All right? Yeah, I know some of you. Now, by the way, what I love about doing these sessions, invited, that no matter what your faith is, no matter what your spirituality or whether you worship or not, there's something about this part of the stage that when I get to people, if they see what happened to other people, they yell out, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> the power we have. The power. Okay. All right. And your name's Lauren. Okay, so Lauren, what I appreciate about you, and I'm going to talk to you about it, too because you have a tendency to do what she does. Sometimes you put a lot of stuff on your plate and, then, and sometimes you can multitask too much. You know what I'm talking about because you got a, got a lot going on, okay? So I'll come back to you, okay, okay? So here's the thing. What is very important, you can't try to please everybody. 
this is your year to say yes to certain things and know how to say no. Do you know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Are you married? I am. How long have you been married? Two years. Okay. How's it working for you? <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. okay. All right. All right. We'll talk about it a little later, okay? Okay. We'll come back to you. I'm trying to get you all to watch when I'm asking questions so you can see certain things, okay? What is your name, sis? Charmin. Okay, I appreciate you. Let me ask you this. How many siblings do you have? On which side? Okay. How many do you have total? 17. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it hurt them as much as it hurt you. <laughs> okay, so can I ask you on both sides, what do you fall in the birth order? I'm second on my mom's side, and I was the baby on my dad's side, but okay. he just had another okay. baby. So here's the thing. Um, how long have you been at your job? 12 years. Okay. You know that pretty soon you're doing great, but you know there's time you're working on another chapter. And I know that you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I ain't going to get your business out there, but I'll let you know what I'm saying. Because your employer could be up in here and want to know what chapter, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, what chapter she was talking about? What does that mean? I mean? So I know, but you know that you're approaching that season that you're about to do some other things that are special for you. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, I'll come back to you later. We can talk later. How you doing? I'm well. You're well? Yes, thank you. So what I appreciate about you, man, you are a great listener. And people sometimes have a tendency to dump things on you. Okay? And lots of times you're carrying the weight of everyone else. and But you don't always let people know what you're going through because you always fix things. Okay? To be tissue, okay? But that's why I said this, you were meant to be here, because you almost didn't come. Okay, okay. But, but, but here, you are approaching your season to take care of you, and the reason why you've been taking care of a lot of people, the reason why I asked that, and I'm looking at everything with everyone, and one of the things is that your posture was tilted a little bit, and so most people may not notice because her power zones were open, but her, her posture was tilted. One side of the body represents masculine, the other side represents feminine, so you're always taking care of other people and everyone, and sometimes you don't get out what you need to get it out and what happens it can not only impact you at home it can impact you at work is that correct yes ma'am okay and so sister girl you needed this good little cry i know you <laughs> we can cry together sometimes look <laughs> No, I don't do this. See, you, I know you don't normally do this, so it caught you off guard. You yes. were in a safe space, okay? Yeah, but, but, but just know, just know, just know that you are worthy and you are great and you don't have to second guess yourself. You don't have to worry about any of that. And bless that, it doesn't matter what's going on on the job. It doesn't matter because that thing that you thought you needed right now, I'm here to tell you, it's greater later. You just delivered, you just delivered it. Okay. Let's give them a big round of applause. Okay. By the way, a couple of them, their feet were pointed in an angle and nonverbal communication, feet are pointed in the direction they want to go. So lots of times when the feet are pointed away, that means they want to get up out of here, up out of here, up out of here. So here is the thing. When reading nonverbal communication, we're going to talk about some more things tomorrow and some things that's going to hopefully take you to the next level. Have you learned a few things? Okay, so quickly. So here is the thing. Number one thing I want you to walk away with is when you're talking or communicating to your teams, to your direct, and you're trying to build people, figure out how much value you can add to another person's life. When you praise someone, you raise them, right? Take the pee off, you raise them. Do unexpected uh, that of girls every now and then. Bring someone in and let them know how much you appreciate them. And here is the, here's the deal. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right? So let's talk about nonverbal. I'm going to give you four C's to prepare you for tomorrow. How many C's am I giving you? Okay, who's happy about the C's? Oh, okay, okay, okay wait a minute. This little section is happy about the C's. Are y'all happy about the C's over here? I'm trying to give you four C's. Okay, what about you all in the back? Are y'all still sitting there? I'm waiting for you to move me, okay? Okay, back in the back. Are you happy about getting the four C's over here? 
Okay, four C's. Okay, so in reading nonverbal communication, one of the things you want to make sure that's very critical, you must know a person's baseline. Everybody write that word down. Baseline is critical. Baseline is this, is knowing who they are on the normal circumstance without any stress. That's why when you meet someone, you'll say, gosh, I don't think Sandy or Susan or Linda likes me. And then someone says, what makes you think that? Well, when I was in her office and I was trying to share my project with her, she wasn't looking at me in the eye. By the way, here in the United States, eye contact is acceptable 85% of the time if you are doing global work, international work. You have to understand the protocol, Asian cultures, other cultures, Japanese cultures. They look right here. You need to know if you're going to be global. Does that make sense? Just drop something there for you. Okay, here in the United States, we do the strong handshake. If we were in India, it could be a sign of disrespect. So if you're going to be global, you've got to be ready. Here in the United States, these are emblems. What does this mean? We're number what? Okay, what does this mean? Right. What does this mean here in the United States? Okay, but in other cultures, it means something else. It means that another man is having sexual relations with your wife. you got to be careful. Okay, so these are called emblems. And if you're traveling globally, you have to be ready, right? I have a, a love white linen, love white linen. But if I was doing business in China, I wouldn't be able to wear that because it signifies mourning, right? So you need to know. Tomorrow we'll talk about colors and patterns and the things that you do, the way you sit, how it relates. Let's get back to the text here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Baseline, knowing a person's baseline, who they are under cir normal circumstance without any stress. How many times you've called your friends and you say, hey, what's up? And you can tell from their tonality, I'm okay. You know, you know you're not. Yes, I am. I'm okay. Because you know from their voice, you know how they approach. I have a really good friend. I don't know where she is right now. She's somewhere in the room. I'm not going to point her out here. But, but uh, there were some things going on in her life. Simply by the way her posture changed, I knew something was taking place. And so the key thing is, when reading a person's baseline, when you're talking to your team and your employees and people who are you doing business with and you're trying to persuade and sell them, you want to be 100% present in their presence. Does this make sense? 100% presence in their presence. You could be looking someplace else and you're not, you're going to lose all those signs. And next thing you know, someone says, you know XYZ is going through a divorce. Oh my gosh, I thought something was up. You know XYZ, someone committed suicide. Oh my gosh, why is it that we see the signs afterwards when they were there before us? So you have to be 100% present in their presence, right? So in reading nonverbal, I'm going to give you the four C's. The first C is you must read them in clusters. You must read them in clusters. What clusters mean is this, movements, different movements. So if I got up on the stage, Yolanda did a wonderful introduction for me, but if I got up on the stage and did like this, if I, first of all, I just want to thank you all. I'm just real excited about being here. And um, thank you, Black Enterprise, Women of Power Summit. And this has really been a thrill, and I'm open to anything you want to talk about. <laughs> See, so my arms are folded. But what happens if my arms are folded and I start doing like this? And next thing you know, one of my mentees gives me a jacket or a scarf. Oh my gosh, she's cold. But what if you would have left the room on the first movement and judged me on the first cluster without those two or three clusters? How many of us done that before? Okay? And when you do that, you are missing great opportunities to connect with another human being. Write this down, RAS. RAS stands for RAS, Reticulating Activating System. And what that simply means is whatever you're looking for, you'll find it. So how many times someone brings in a new team member and you don't like them? I know it doesn't happen to this group. It's just another conference I spoke at, right? So to bring a team member in, you don't like them, you don't like them, Keisha, you don't, you don't like them. And then all of a sudden they says, no, you know, Linda's got great skills. She's got great, I don't see it. So whatever you're looking for, the brain will search for that to validate that. So reading them in clusters, don't judge me by the first thing. There was a gentleman sitting on the bus. His kids was running around just acting crazy. And people were saying to him, why don't you do something with your kids? He, because he was sitting there still. First of all, any body language that's sitting there still that is not movement is not normal. If it's still too long, unless you're meditating, you're not meditating for 20 days. So if you're sitting there too long, it is odd. So you're either something's going on or you'd be dead. <laughs> you see? So here's what's happening. He was sitting there. He was in shock because he just got off the phone because he uh, called from the hospital. His wife died. But see, somebody else is judging. Why does he do anything with his kids? You don't know the story. Somebody say, there's always a story behind the emotion. Say it. All right, so clusters, reading them in clusters, trying to get one, two, or three things to validate. The second thing is congruency. Congruency, 
the words, the tone, and the nonverbal. Here's a sound bite for you. If all three don't agree, then there's a disconnect in the message between you and me. If all three don't agree, there's a disconnect in the message between you and me. So in other words, if I'm standing up here and says, you know, you guys, I really love you. It's such a thrill being here. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I said the words, but the tone and the nonverbal didn't match. Right? Okay? So make sure that there's congruency. First thing, clusters. The second C is congruency. And the other thing is the right context. I think the temperature is supposed to be up in the 70s today, right? As I think about that high, right? So what would happen if I got that wonderful introduction? I come on stage. Keisha, thank you so much for doing everything you did to get me here. I get here on stage, and all of a sudden, I'm wearing a full-length fur coat. Doesn't matter if it's fur, real fur or faux fur, but a full-length fur coat. And you know it's hot outside. You may not say anything, but you're going to look at each other, and you're going to do a nonverbal that goes like this. What's up with that? <laughs> Because it's out of context. So when I'm watching videotape from Shushu to Poo Poo department stores and there's a shoplifting ring, I'm looking at the videotape and I'm noticing that a well-dressed Caucasian European gentleman walks in the door just dressed to the nines, looking fabulous. They're not looking at him because of the unconscious bias. They're looking at the three gentlemen that came behind him. One was Hispanic, the other was black, the other was Caucasian dressed in grunge, if you will, in the Shushu Poo Poo department store. They were looking at that. I'm looking at the distance that they walked and the timing between each other. Guess what? The European well-dressed gentleman, he was head of the shoplifting lifting ring. Look at the biases that we have that can affect the nonverbal that we read. Okay, so number one, again, clusters, congruency, and the right context. And the other is culture. We don't have to agree. We, you know, just respect each other and honor each other's differences and understand in different cultures there are different things and different ways that people act. One thing that is universal around the world is the seven emotions. That's universal. But understand knowing that their culture may be different from yours and be able to honor and respect that. And that's how you'll be able to find out great information. It's making sense. Okay? Did we learn this? Is this helpful? Okay? All right? So... You, what's your name? D. D. What is your name? You, you, behind you, with the, with the orange. Okay, okay. Sis, what's your name? Doing the gray. Okay, all right. Is this your first conference? Yes. You've been here before. You glad you came? Yes. Okay. What's on your mind? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, did you make a phone call back home? Yes. Or okay, okay. So come up here real quick. Lock the doors for the rest of you so you won't run. I know what you're trying to think. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay, so uh, DeAndrea? Okay, come up and turn around. First of all, beautiful, give her a round of applause. And so, the thing that I appreciate about you, you're powerful, you can get the job done, but guess what we have to work on? You tell me if I'm right or wrong. Little patience and tolerance. I want you to think about that. Patience and tolerance. Because sometimes you have what we call lightning thinking, that you move really, you think quickly, and can be quicker than other people. Okay? Now, the other thing that I want to tell you is this, is that, does anyone know her? Okay? Is she good at keeping secrets? Very good, isn't she? Right. And if you find out something that's going on with her, you may not find out till later unless you are in the main group. Do you know what I mean? Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. And so one of the things that I want you to be aware of, okay, is you have no problem, never have, saying what you have to say and when you want to say it. What? <laughs> Did you see the lip compression? Okay, so, and I'm saying this to you so that you could be aware before you speak, before the emotion takes hold, just be aware, okay? 
Okay, do you have any questions for me? I think I missed that last little nugget. Which one about the, about the how speaking quickly? Yes. Okay, so if something's going on in a meeting mm -hmm. or something's happening, mm -hmm. and if it hits you the wrong way, you don't necessarily hold back. You have no problem speaking up or making a comment or saying what you have to say. And if you internalize it, then you're wearing it all day on your face. Okay, okay, all right. Let's give her a round of applause, all right? Okay, so they gave me a sign for Q&A. For first, I want to tell you, there are 31,536,000 seconds in a year. You've only got a minute, 60 seconds in it. It's forced up on you. You didn't seek it. You didn't lose it. You are hurt if you abuse it accountable. It's only a tiny little minute. Benjamin May says, the rest of your future is in it. I thank you for your time. Okay? So we've got two microphones here for Q&A. Did we learn something? Part one. See, here's the deal. One of my mentees said to me, and I know you all don't care about it. Do you mind if I share? Do you? Somebody say share, sister, share. Okay. There's a workshop that I used to do for like C-suite level because lots of times power women spend so much time in their career that other things can suffer. Do you know what I mean? Family time together, relationships, all that can suffer. And I used to do a workshop, and I know you all don't really care about it, but I just want to share it. It's titled Chocolate After Midnight. And see, I know I'm at the Women of Power Summit. I'm supposed to talk about strategies that help take your career to the next level. And I know it doesn't matter because this is a beautiful room. You look fabulous. But Chocolate at the Midnight is simply this. It's like 21 nonverbal moves that you can do that have the person of your desire totally into you. But I know you didn't care about it. That's okay. That's just another time. It's just another time I know you don't... I know you don't care. Just call, you know, just, just, just tell Leroy, put some salt and pepper on the poke chop. It don't matter, matter. Okay, let's, over, let's do the question right there. Sis, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Fran Legall. Um, Is there a mic so on? Much. Speak right into the mic. Good afternoon, Fran Legall. Thank you so much for taking my question. How does a woman show up in the room, in a, a room full of men, especially if they're not being heard? What type of body language? Okay, so really quick, 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 quick. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. See, so it's, well, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of teacher and reacher that if you're gonna, uh oh, now, now some of you think I ain't gonna ask my question now. I ain't gonna ask my question. We just go ahead and miss your little blessing. Don't ask your little question. Okay, I'm bringing her up here so you can learn together as a group. Okay, so one of the things I'm glad you asked that question because you've got a, a introvert and and extrovert tendencies. You want to be an extrovert, and you're, but you're a heavy, heavy introvert, and you've been told, freeze, freeze, freeze. Look at the way she's standing. Did you notice that she backed up from me a little bit slightly? Anybody see that back? An extrovert will walk right on into it. You see what I mean? But she backed up a little bit. And so people are telling you that, girl, you got to show up to be heard. And so here's what's critical. I want you to say very carefully, I want you to say your name and these words, I'm a powerful woman. Francis, I'm a powerful woman. Okay, so now I want you to be, just relax with it. Be relaxed, don't force it, okay? You just shift it, okay? No, 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 no. I'm trying to teach you something. Because see, when she said I'm a powerful woman, you, you notice that the entire time I've been up here, I've been in my superwoman stance. Okay, the feet held shoulder width. When I told her to say I'm a powerful woman, she said the words, did anybody know what she did? What did she do? She stepped to the side. It canceled out the verbal. Okay, so let's say if you ask me, Linda, can you handle the contract? If we give you this multi-million dollar contract, can you handle it? Somebody, yes, ask me that. Ask me. I think I can. No. Did you see that? See, so the, uh, the nonverbal overruled the verbal. Okay, so the moment that you, that you said that, you stepped back. When you stepped back, you took it back nonverbally. Okay, now she just did something else. Anybody see it? Okay, she did, write it down, take a note, she did what we call an eyebrow flash. When you do an eyebrow flash and someone asking you a question, you do the eyebrow flash. If you ask me, are you African American? Am I? <laughs> okay, 
So the thing that I will work with you on, beautiful, is to keep your head level-headed, and I want you to begin to practice and make sure, and that's why we have to watch with our fancy shoes so that we can be able to hold our stance, and I want you to practice in different registers like five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to hear you do a scale like that, and we're going to find your, we're going to find your power voice. Start with a high. Five, four, yes. five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so say in your two, in your two voice, your name, and I'm a powerful woman. You got to remember, get your two voice, okay? You got it? You want to try it again? So you can feel your two? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, say in your two voice, you're a powerful woman. I'm a powerful woman. All right. Give her a round of applause. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 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 uh. You walking off the stage like a little girl. Okay. Uh-uh. Okay. No, no, no. Watch, watch, watch. No, no, no. No, I got to teach my babies. I got to teach it, right? So this is why I want you to walk when you... <laughs> walk strong. Do I need to back up and do that? <laughs> Just, if you feel like it, walk, girl, walk. <laughs> walk. <laughs> Question over here. Good day, I'm Keisha Walker. Thank you so much Thank for you, your sis. no regrets attitude and the most importantly, the examples you're showing us on what we need to do to be even better. So uh, this has been one of my most enjoyable uh, sessions today. So I thank you. And you're doing it by yourself. So even more impressive. Nothing against all the beautiful women, powerful women I've seen earlier, but just to commend you because this is something that not only we can use, we can share with our daughters, our nieces. Thank the staff. So thank you. I want you to thank the staff. Thank, you. thank Caroline, Caroline. Thank the staff. Black Enterprise. All and the sis, partners. So tell me your question. You. Tell me your question. <laughs> Tell me a question. That's another thing black women, we have a tendency to do when we get in Go speech. On. We want to tell the Oprah version. Just get to it. Tell me the dog is dead. I tell like me the that. dog is dead. I like that Oprah billion right. dollars, though. I like them. I so like tell me your question, so I want to make sure I get everyone. I have a deep voice. And a lot yes. of times people say it's commanding, and sometimes it takes people back, or it, it makes people get on defensive. So didn't know if there was recommendations for me, and or I have young ladies that right. I mentor. Okay, so hold on. You have a deep voice and you have a wonderful register. Do you know years ago there were women executives that were actually trying to have surgery to lower their vocal range, lower their vocal cord, because the lower register is that a sign of authority. Okay, but here's what you have to be aware of. You have to have texture and movement in your voice. You can't say, I just got a strong voice. Sometimes it could be intimidating. So I even feel that as opposed of listen to my register and ask this. You see how the, the voice caresses? That's what you have to practice. So here's what I want you to do. Instead of being level-headed, you don't have to battle. I'm your sister. Don't have to battle. I want you to take your head and just tilt it naturally as if you're caring and listening. Okay? And I simply want you to say, I want to learn to flow. I want to learn to flow. Okay, listen very carefully. I want to learn to flow like the river. I want to learn to flow like the river. Okay? So you got to work on that because your flow should sound like flow. And the river, they should feel it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right, question over here. Thank you. Question right here. Thank you again. I'm Charlene Polite Corley from Nielsen, and we have a growing remote culture. So I, I've been working from home for the last seven years. And so since so much of communication is nonverbal, I wonder if you have any specific guidance for those of us who might work remotely more than we do in person. Okay, so meaning, do you want to get in front of people or you're doing on, on the video, online? It's both. Yeah, so I do, most of my work is, um, in, for those my colleagues in my company, most of it is video or calls. Um, I do visit clients in person, but for growing my presence and my network internally, a lot of it is done remote. So right. So you, so you have to make an effort to get out, if not networking events, to get out to meet your clients, if, if, they, if you're able to do that, right. or to be around other people, because otherwise you'll get set in your ways and too comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because you're in your environment and you'll get lax and you'll get, you'll get a little bit comfortable. So what you have to do is make an effort to make sure that you are in someone's presence, even if it's once a month, once a quarter, make an effort to have a one-on-one -on -one with your direct, make a strong effort to do that. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. you're gonna have to be able to do that. Now there's another question that you have behind that. Do you, are you good? Yeah, um, yeah so basically building on that is, um, which I do get out to see my clients, so I'm out regularly each week, um, a few times. Uh, I interact with my clients more than I do with my own company. So I think in, in the unique role that we have in the culture that we have, a lot of that can get lost, I guess is the way to say it. Right. With my clients might know me better than my company, if you will. So, that my, their so what are you going to do about it? Oh, I'm, well, so I actually have implemented, instead of just doing phone calls, I'll try, I'm making an effort to 
do more video okay. so that they do see like the other types of context around communication. And that's good, and when you do the video, just because they can't see, if in many cases, sometimes they can see you or you can't see them, you've gotta make sure that you are on point. Absolutely. Okay, and when you do the video, do it in conversational tone so they can feel connected. Thank you. All right, okay, do me a favor, when you're doing, if you ever do any meetings, don't stand there with your hands like that. Okay. All right, okay, good. What would you recommend? Well, I would recommend that you <laughs> steeple. So when you're doing your presentations, you want to make sure that you are steepling if you're doing that, because some women are uncomfortable. They figure, oh, I don't want to do it with my hands. So you steeple. If you watch the news tonight, you'll see newscasters. The desk is made to the level of the belly button because that's where we're most vulnerable. All of our organs, a lot of things are right there. So when you expose this, you show transparency. So imagine a pyramid, and you're speaking from here, and you could go back from there comfortable. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. Okay, but make sure when you're doing your pyramid, it's right at the belly button. Don't make it too low because you're sending another message. <laughs> okay, question over here, over here, over here. How are we doing on time? How are we doing on time? Over here. Before we get in trouble. Hi, Karen. Thank you for being here. Um, my question is, is I want you to ask the question. I want you to steeple. That's okay. Be comfortable. You know, now, don't, don't do the legs like this, okay? Because <laughs> that can, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. My question is, my nonverbal is mis often mis uh, misunderstood. And so I was wondering, how do you, when someone says, fix your face, or smile, or you look angry, or I walked in and it felt like I was bothering you, but it's just that I'm concentrating or I'm stressed okay. or something. Okay, well remember what we said early, one of the keys that I gave you all, is yes. to be present in their presence. So when you're walking in a meeting and people are looking at you, that's their impression. Even if your mind, your body's there, but your mind is on the other side of town because you're concentrating on something else, but they see that blank stare. They're not getting any validation or confirmation back. They just see that. So you're not present in their presence. So be aware of that. You have to make a conscious effort to be aware of that. Otherwise, it looks like you don't want to be connected. What if you don't want to be connected? <laughs> Sometimes I'm just trying to get lunch. I got I to gotta go to a meeting or whatever. And people are like, I saw you and you gave me a look and I thought you were mad at me. And I'm like, no, I'm busy. My kid's sick. I got to get to this meeting and I got to go. That's it. <laughs> but I'm, I feel like I need to... <laughs> I feel like I need to put on something in order to... Give people what they okay, need. Okay, 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 okay. She gave me just five minutes. Sorry. This sound like this going to take a year. <laughs> and perhaps you may want to look at a job where you can work from home. <laughs> I do work in finance. I work with spreadsheets. So that's very comfortable for me. <laughs> but I have a team. Okay. And I need to go around and say hello and, and listen to the dog story and do all the things, whatever, and then I go to work. <laughs> okay, it's not a setup. I, okay, I'm, I'm, we can get together late. I got Dr. Phil on speed <laughs> dial, all right? So we need to talk a little bit later, and I oh. want you to think about what you said. <laughs> I really want you to think about that, darling. Have a little seat. It's just honest. Have a little seat. And I, I will never have Fifi around you. Okay, over here real quick, how much time we got? How much are we running? Huh? Three minutes. We got three minutes. Everybody Hi. go, aw. <laughs> aw. <laughs> okay. So my name is Ariana. And growing up, my mom would always say that I wear my feelings on my sleeve. Yes. As a negative thing, of course. Um, so I'm just wondering what your perspective is on that. Do you think there's value in being able, in wearing your feelings on, this, on your sleeve, or is there a balance, or is always I bad? think what mother, maybe perhaps mother was saying is don't be too sensitive. Don't take, you see what happens is when people share things with you, things that are happening, you could take it to heart too soon, and then you react. Never let them see you sweat. If you're gonna cry, you go outside. 
You take your makeup, you do all that. You never ever let them see you sweat. And what happens is that you'll get too tender hearted and too so sensitive then your directs won't be able to give you feedback because they're afraid that you may have a breakdown. All right? So you got to be able to be able to receive that. And always remember, you don't have to be attached to everything that someone says to you. Just look at it from three different ways, from the student mode, from the observer mode. And sometimes you may be the teacher. You may have some information that you can share. But you get real sensitive. And what's going to happen, sweetheart, when you're working on projects, if next thing you know, if I'm your director, says, wait, this is great, this is great, but this is something we, you want to go back on and work on, you're going to get sensitive. I've worked three months on this. They don't know I've given my life, my blood I gave up it ain't about you does that make sense yes okay say yes yes okay all right thank, thank you. you okay okay what gentleman said let him go they said let him go see I think that's what I'm saying that magic okay yes okay over here yes over here Hi. Hi, my name is Camille. Hi, I'm beautiful. A sapient. I'm from DC. Um, I wanted to ask. I know I have a couple nervous tics. I've had them for years. I touch a necklace that I wear when right. I'm anxious. I reach for my hair. I've noticed it, and I try to stop myself when I do it. I know it can make me look unconfident or anxious, but doing those things does give me a lot of comfort, and it helps me to slow down. So, should, what can I do to not do those be things? Because remember, we said earlier those are pacifiers, mm -hmm. and you just said. They're comfortable, and this is what you're doing. Pacifiers are self-soothing. Don't move. And see right there what you're doing right now? Okay, for those of you who probably can't see it, she's holding her hand on her wrist like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So ladies, and I'm going to show this to you all, please don't do this when you're in meetings, okay? So make a note. The higher the hold, the higher the stress, okay? So I want you to start practicing relaxing, and here is the thing, because when you do those ticks, they may, you may be doing them at times when they're asking you questions that challenge you, that help you grow. So when you do those things, then next thing you know, you're saying, I'm capable of doing it, but your nonverbal says, oh, I'm not secure with this. And you may be missing opportunities. So you're aware of them, right? Yes. So you have to make a conscious effort to be able to not do that. So everybody make a fist with their right hand real quick, okay? So we make a fist with your right hand. It activates the left side of the brain, okay? And the left side of the brain is where we store memories. So when you want to remember something, you're about to go into a meeting, you make a fist. If you park your car somewhere and you think, okay, C, 26, 7, you make a fist. It'll help you remember automatically when you do that. Uh, right? Remember this date, December 26. Everybody say December 26. Make a fist. That's my birthday. Okay. So I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. But the reason why I'm saying that is so that you can say, I got to be conscious. Is I got to come up and show up as a powerful woman. And then video. I got homework for you. I want you to videotape yourself doing just a little mini presentation of more than five minutes. So you can watch yourself and ask yourself, would I do business with me? Is that good? That sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Over here. I feel like Oprah. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Angela Freeman, and um, I have a problem with individuals misinterpreting my body language. Uh, I'm very calm when I'm under stress, and so if I come off direct, they feel as though I'm bringing it too high. So if I come, they, everybody's used to me being very nice and passionate, and they take me a passive, right. as a passive person. But if I step into the room direct, so make sure that my- What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that look like? For me, it looks like being very focused. Um, my tone is a little bit stronger. Okay, so here's very what you got. Direct. Hold on, see if your tone, you can listen to me, I'm very direct. I can yes. be very direct with you. But notice that my tone, this is important that we get this report done by the end of the month. It is very critical. What happens is that your tone changes and they become like little razor blades if you're not careful. That's why the listeners perceiving it differently. Oh, that she's changed. And when your, your mind locks up, so does the body and it's not flowing and connecting. So if you're doing this, just be aware of your tonality when you change that tone. You have to have some variation. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, excuse me. Okay. But when I come off that way. I'm not, no, 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 I'm not asking you when you come off that way. You could still be strong in your message. Gotcha. You could still be strong in your pacing. You can still be strong as a team. We can do this. We can meet our goals. We can meet our numbers. You see the difference? As opposed to team, we can meet our goals. We can meet our numbers. Yay. 
No, there's a difference. There's a difference. And looking at them and acknowledging them, looking at them directly. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of and always remember what the attitude is when the words come out and how do you want the people to walk away when they leave your presence. Thank you. That's what's key. Thank you. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Did it help? Thank you. No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it didn't. You know what didn't? You know why? Because you did like this. It did, it did. No, it didn't. You know, you, you're talking to a body language expert, boo. Now get back in there, let's answer the question. Thank you, you answered my question. Okay. I appreciate it. I'm gonna get you later on. <laughs> I ain't messing with you right now, okay? Yes, sis. So mine kind of was similar to uh, the young lady that was talking about facial. So I have a huge smile. And since I've moved to Baltimore from Tennessee, I feel like a lot of times people take my smile as like me being like kindness for weakness kind of thing. And so I just wanted to get more advice on. So here's the advice I'm going to give you, okay? Because you're just friendly like that. You're just yeah. a happy little person. Yeah. Okay? You're just happy, happy, happy. Okay? And that's good. But understand, okay, you've got um, the abiculary oculi muscles right here. Okay, and you got the Guillaume Duchier muscles right here, zygomatic mus muscles right here. So when you're smiling, a genuine smile only lasts less than three seconds. So someone who's walking around smiling all the time, what's up? <laughs> hey, 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 you're at a funeral. Hey, oh, he looked, buddy, laid him out nice though. He's gone, but you know, no, okay. All right, does that make sense? Because otherwise it could be a nervous glitch if it's too long. Okay. Because it's just natural. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? So when you feel the emotion and the time and you smile, like, wow, that's nice. That's nice. When it's genuine, you feel it and it comes. But if you're just constantly walking around smiling because you want everybody to like you. Okay, because you're sweet like that. You're friendly, you just won't get along. Yeah, maybe. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe you're right, yeah. So I would, that's the reason why I was <laughs> <laughs> But I was trying to see what are some other facial, I mean, expressions like should I just walk around with no smell? no honey just no first of all yeah. if you are happy okay if I say to you uh -huh. girlfriend guess what we just won the lottery I'm gonna split it with you how are you gonna react hey no you don't <laughs> how many of you gonna go like that hey if I if I just said I just won the lottery I'm gonna spin it with you hey <laughs> it just has to be Write this word down, TAP, T-A-P. Truthful, authentic, and it shows up in the proof. Okay. When you're true, that's another good one, man. I gotta come back here with a book. Okay? okay. But see, you want to ask some other stuff. See, so can I ask you, are you in a relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all not gonna worry me right now, okay? Y'all not gonna worry me right now. I just, I, 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 can't, I can't do this. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit later. See you tomorrow if you be at the session. Everybody raise the right hand. Okay, so one of the things that I do when I'm working with lawyers and working with jury selection, I have my little special unorthodox way when I'm trying to prepare people who are gonna be in the witness stand, so I ask them to raise the right hand. And I say to them, you know you're gonna be sworn in. But there's a reason why I'm asking them to do that because once I understand their baseline and I know everything that's going on about them so I can be able to ask the right questions. So lots of times someone raise the right hand and say, I want you to say, I promise to be a powerful woman of power. Okay, so one of the things that I notice that if I know a person's baseline and understand, spend some time with them, if the hand goes back like this, they'll lie like a rug. <laughs> hand goes up like this, look at this, they'll bend the truth. Hand goes up like this, they'll tell it all, sing like Beyonce. <laughs> hand goes up like this, straight up not tell it, they'll dot every eye, cross every T, put your hands down. Now do me a favor, do not leave this wonderful conference this weekend and go home and ask your significant other, what did you do while I was gone? Read your right hand! Thank you for your time.